Greetings, dear viewers, and welcome to an episode where I take a piece of media, be it comic, manga, or animation, and see if it's good, bad, or somewhere in between. Today we'll be looking into one of my personal favorite series that actually got me into anime to begin with, and that series is All My Goddess. All My Goddess was written and drawn by Kozuki Fujishima, whose art style you may remember if you were a fan of Sakura Wars or the Tales of series. The manga was published by Monthly Afternoon all the way back since 1988 up until its final chapter in 2014, with Dark Horse Comics publishing it for the US. The story revolves around a college student named Keiji Morisato, who accidentally dials a number that hooks him up to the goddess helpline in heaven and is visited soon by a goddess who wants to grant him a wish. With that said, let's head into chapter 1 of All My Goddess the Manga and see the humble beginnings of a series that was my gateway into anime. We open with our main character Keiji Morisato begrudgingly taking a message for his roommate named Tamiya. Jeez, I wish he'd get himself a damn answering machine. This sucks. Oops, tell me to give him a call if he got any messages. He tries to call out but gets a response from somebody claiming to be part of a goddess technical helpline. Before he could hang up though, the person the voice belongs to appears right before him. Through his mirror. Keiji is understandably freaked out, but the goddess apologizes and gives a proper introduction to calm him down. I am the goddess Bell Dandy. And just to point out something, Bell Dandy's name, it's actually based on one of the Fate Sisters from Norse mythology, Verdandi, the one who sees into the present. The reason her name is spelled as Bell Dandy is because Japan has no proper pronunciation for the V sound in Verdandi's name, so as an alternative they use the B sound along with a few other changes to allow for the name Bell Dandy to be pronounced in the same manner as Verdandi. Languages are weird. She gives him her business card and states that where she works at, they specialize in helping people like Keiichi with their problems, and that the way how they know this is through a system request that came in through his telephone. That's kind of a weird way for things to work, but whatever. She also informs him that there's no limit to his wish, so if he wants to be rich, done. He wants to blow up the world, done. Though she mentions how they tend to avoid people who would want to make a wish like that. Given the current state of the world, I think that last one would be everybody's wish. Also, yeah, I'll go into more detail about this later, but Fujishima's early art style? Really cringy looking. Keiichi thinks that this is some sort of prank his roommates put him up to since he's terrible with women, and Bell Dandy asks him why he thinks this way. He demonstrates this by having her stand beside him and explains that his problem is him being too short. I'm sorry, but I still don't understand. Why would that deprive you of luck with women? She's right, Keiichi. You shouldn't feel insecure about your height. Women love little guys, too. He smiles a bit after her comment and tells Bodeni that he's ready to make his wish. I want a goddess like you to be with me always. Dude, you could have at least taken her out to dinner first. Check out this panel. Bodeni looks like she's trying to hold back some pent-up rage against him for that. A beam shoots out of Bell Danny's head and blows a freaking hole through the roof into the sky. Yeesh. Dude asks a woman to stay with him forever. End of the world happens. Good job there, Keiichi. After things settle down, Bell Danny uses Keiichi's phone to try to call up to heaven. Apparently, his wish was approved and that it can't be undone. Keiichi is visibly shocked by all this. Bell Dandy also explains that she no longer has the ability to cancel the wish since she's been essentially cut off from heaven now that she's bound to earth, comparing it to how a TV receives its signals via the antenna. Keiichi explains that her being here is going to be a problem then since, well, the dorm he's staying in? Yeah, it's a men's only dorm. Admittedly, this makes him thinking his roommates were pulling a prank earlier seem kind of dumb since, well, if they don't allow women in the dorm, why would they hire one to meet up with Keiichi in the first place? However, Boldani states that that won't be a problem since she's a goddess and not a woman. There's a gender identity joke in there somewhere. Keiji suggests that Beldandi leaves the place and hides so that way she won't get caught. However, Beldandi then states that due to the nature of his wish, the Force will ensure that Beldandi will always be by his side. Even suggesting something like the two being separated can cause it to activate. Huh, who knew that the Force had an OTP this whole time? And speaking of trouble, here's Tamiya and the rest of the dorm. Yo, Marsato, you taking my calls like I told you? 
and they react to Keiichi being with Bell Dandy as you would expect they would. You know the rules, Morisato. What do we do when someone breaks the rules, boys? Riot! They toss both of them out and tell Keiichi that they'll send him his belongings when he gets a new place to stay, even telling him that they also fixed his sidecar on his motorbike. And so we end the chapter with the two of them riding off into the night. What new adventures await them on their journey? Will Keiichi be able to find a place for them to stay? Well that, my dear viewers, is a story for another time. This chapter was... kind of meh. I know that must be weird for me to say given how I praised the series earlier as my gateway into anime, but that doesn't really mean that it's perfect. The artwork is honestly one of the real sticking points in this chapter. A lot of times we get dead-eyed expressions from some of the characters, and even the designs look kind of bleh. However, I do also want to be clear on this. This was all done when Kozuke Fujishima was first starting out, and trust me, his art greatly improves over the years. Heck, his art and character designs would be so great that, as I mentioned earlier, he would go on to do character designs for games like Soccer Wars until the 2019 reboot, in my opinion, it's a real shame, and those are just not holding candle to him, to even the Tales of series, a game franchise that I am not really familiar with, but I'm sure some of my viewers out there are. While it does go right into the meat of things, the pacing feels... rushed. We're instantly shown Keiichi, but we're not really given anything in terms of his personality other than he just seems to be a regular guy. Even Bill Dandy doesn't really come off as much to anything with her in terms of a personality. For goodness sakes, a stranger just bound you to him for the rest of his life! At least be a little freaked out about it! All in all, it may be a weak start, but given that the series lasted from 1988 all the way up to 2014, I think that speaks a lot about the qualities of the series. I highly recommend checking it out, especially since Dark Horse is still publishing the omnibuses. And with that said, my dear viewers, tune in next time as we once again dive into another piece of media and see if it's good, bad, or somewhere in between. Thank you for watching, and take care.